2015, the North Dakota Legislature, Department of Agriculture, and their corporate allies quietly rolled back anti-corporate farming laws that had been serving North Dakotans well since 1932. If allowed into our state, corporate-owned hog and dairy confined animal feeding operations, CAFOs, will locate with little regard to nearby neighbors and cause proven widespread impact to the health of people and the environment. Dakota Resource Council members joined with the North Dakota Farmers Union and other allies to gather the 20,000 signatures needed to refer these changes to the ballot box. North Dakota voters rejected corporate farming on June 14, 2016 by a three to one margin, 75.7% to 24.3%. Measure one was defeated in all 53 North Dakota counties, but the fight is not over. Our community is a small community. It was good to have the children go to school in a small school. Um, just life in general out, on the, out in the country, it's a good place to raise kids and we have a few neighbors that are, we get along with and it's easy to work with them, buy feed for cows or, or whatever, you know, to work together, it's nice. This is my mom and dad's place. I've lived here 64 years, actually longer than what my mom and dad did. So, uh, it used to be a wonderful place. I, I enjoy the outdoors, the fresh air and the sunshine and uh, that fresh air part is no longer with us anymore. You're looking at their facility has 6,500 hogs, sows in it, and they produce 144,000 babies a year. I believe it was built in 2013. Um, they had started building, and it's supposed to be 5,400 sows, and I believe 120,000 pigs are supposed to come out of there annually. We're not ready for this type of thing. You know, you tout it and you tout it, but we're not ready to, for, whether it's the environment, whether it's the neighborhood, whether it's the water, whether it's the air quality to take care of this type of thing. We're just not ready for it. And I don't think we ever will be. It's what I call the industrial agricultural establishment, the people that are benefiting from the, the large, specialized, standardized, consolidated animal feeding operations in large industrial agriculture, then they're mounting a major sort of public relations campaign to try to convince the public that these large confinement animal feeding operations and these factory farms are fundamentally no different than traditional family farms. There's no personality with it. There's no caring about the neighbors with a facility like that. With a family farm, they care because they have to live next to you, they have to be friends with you, and there's just no comparison. I live in the same section. We're just a little over a mile apart. It's in the southeast, and I'm in the northwest corner of the section. Um, it's a 5,400 sow unit, supposedly. Um, 1,100 replacement gilts, 140,000 feeder pigs a year. We earn our living off of this part. I mean, that's just... That's what we do. When uh, the gas from the facility rolls in, yeah, I notice it in my, uh, I start coughing and your eyes tear. There are times when we cannot go outside. If the wind is from the southwest, basically we can't go outside. They tell me it's hydrogen sulfide. So, and my physician told me if I breathe it long enough, I'll sooner or later end up with a respiratory disease. So. I can go outside and my nose will be plugged up within 10 minutes, and if I stay out too long, I'll get a headache that won't go away. South Dakota has no monitoring of the lagoons or of the, the, the manure pits. What's gonna happen when there's a leak? When do you find out when there's a leak? Uh, I have a real concern with putting manure on tiled ground. We have no regulations for that, you know? Well, I'm a prisoner in my own home because when we do get the southeast winds, it comes into our home right in our farm and I can't open up the windows. I'm start crying. <laughs> we raised our kids here. We put our heart and our souls into this place and they're ruining it. That's the way it is. This is the only place I want to be. But as a future for the farm to go on in my family, I'm going to say that went down the tube when they come. And I can't blame my kids for not wanting to come home here to live. So. Unless they change their operation, put their biofilters on and use their pit at, just, it's not going to be fit to live in. If corporate farming is allowed, what can people expect? You will expect pig farms, a lot of them. You will expect 
turkey and poultry farms, or poultry farms, a lot of them, you will expect the big dairies. Uh, you're going to have to fight them every step of the way to control odor or anything, and um, that's not going to help the community as much as they promise it will. You will find that your rivers and your lakes are going to be polluted because if there's any tiling and they throw that manure on tiled ground, it's going to go into your rivers and your lakes. It's just going to get there. I would say uh, if the town people don't get involved pretty soon and stop what's going on, all of a sudden they're going to find it besides them and they're not going to enjoy it, I tell you that much. So. But the, the town people need to be concerned what goes on out in the country. Sooner or later it's going to affect them. Okay, so they come in, you've got some rules and regulations, but I'll guarantee you that your next legislative session, they're going to kind of go in and try and change those rules just a little bit so it's a little bit easier. Whether it's changing your mile order setback, well, it's, it's a half a mile now, nobody's complaining. So it, and they're going to ease their way in so that they basically can go any place that they want. And that's my fear. You don't want them to start, you, you just don't. We were at peace here. My husband's now running for county commissioner. Um, I'm running for the legislature again. It's made a fighter out of both of us. And it's made a fighter out of both of us because we know what it's done to us and we don't want it to happen to anybody else. We don't want what happened to this neighborhood to help to happen to other neighborhoods. Fight it uh, and, and go to your legislator, pack the Capitol, go in front of your governor's desk and fight it. Family farming and ranching are the foundation of North Dakota's economy and shared values. People who live in our state are part of a local community and who choose to be proud stewards of the land. Don't let corporations determine North Dakota's future. It's in our power to keep a system in place that has been working since 1932. We can shape the future of agriculture in North Dakota. Even more family farms and ranches instead of none.